think the best way is to learn, actually learn through fun and learn through experience. The biggest challenge is retaining their attention. I like because there is uh, actually um, the time practice for the students. A very good afternoon and welcome to Starridge Education. So ladies and gentlemen, I have with me seated beside Miss Ruby. Hi Ruby, thank you for joining us on this interview. Uh, could you first tell all our viewers out there who you are, how long you've been teaching, what subjects do you teach? Okay, hi everyone. Hi, I am Ruby and um, I'm teaching English and I have been teaching for the past 25 years. Wow. Yeah, and I love teaching and I love working with with kids especially and uh, parents as well. My name is Elena Fernandez. I've been a teacher and a communicator, a communicator first uh, for the last 30 odd years uh, and uh, 25 actually, sorry. Uh, and um, a teacher since I came to Singapore in 2007. Hi, my, my name is Candy. Um, I've been teaching sec secondary math for about 10 years. They are around set 1 to set 4, so it's about six, uh, 13 to 16 years old. So, in your professional opinion, mm -hmm. how do you feel students best absorb and retain knowledge in the classroom? Uh, for me, what I feel really works is having them link the, inf in the information uh, or any new idea that is um, passed on to them and linking it to something um, like a previous experience, for example, or like if I were to be teaching them uh, expressions or phrases, phrasal verbs, for example. So to link it to a memory that is already established, uh, preferably to something uh, that is um, that is of interest to them. So for example, if I were teaching uh, a 14 year old boy, so I'd have to do research on games that are popular and link it to that. So if I'm teaching prepositions or and you know Minecraft for example would be used. So it's linking, I mean in you know we're looking at the structure of the brain where memory is retained is in the hippocampus and if you can find a way to link the information and preferably to a specific location it helps them remember. For example if I were to teach phrasal verbs so like jump over or go into or go through for so I would use the game and we would play it together so that they can attach those phrasal verbs or vocabulary for example to the game and so the next time they're playing it you know that information would they would be able to recall it I think the best way is to learn actually learn through fun and learn through experience and learn through practicing because uh, our brain activity relaxes the most and absorbs the most when they are really under the relaxing learning mode. There's this one time that we had a debating session and the topic was on how do you get yourself to motivational study and then so we had a debating going on and kids were throwing out their own answers and I was improvising and this is how we learn through debating and learn through fun and experience sharing. Yes, absolutely, Ruby. I cannot agree more with you. You never know what the kids can bring to the classroom, isn't it? Yes, exactly. Full of adventurous answers. All right, so Ruby, on that note, um, what kind of learning constraints do you think your own students would face? And as a very experienced teacher, what kind of challenges do you face in your job? Okay, I think nowadays, um, because the technology on phone, and Google, yeah, so kids nowadays, they seem to be too reliable on answers on everything, very, very systematic, and according to Google, according to the technology. So, and also the motivation, because kids nowadays, I think they don't like the old school ways of learning anymore. Yeah, so um, we have to motivate them. I think key to success of learning is also motivation.
And in this day and age uh, of social media and videos that are flying, you know, into yeah. your face every wow. second that you hold uh, your phone, of course, I would find that the biggest challenge is retaining their attention. Oh yes. Uh, you have to make it exciting. You can't open a book and say, okay, do this exercise and expect them to be thoroughly excited about it. Even to get them to read a book um, before they've yeah, established that habit of reading and you know, yeah, theater of the mind and imagining the story in their head. So that would be, I feel, you know, because the atten attention span has shortened tremendously over the years, as compared to maybe, you know, 10 years ago when I first started uh, teaching and kids didn't have access to mobile phones like they do now. So it's it's making sure that the lesson is exciting and, it's, uh, it, and it holds their attention. Yeah. So it's all about creative methodologies and just, you know, changing the way you do things mm -hmm. as an educator. Yes. So Candy, how do you think the AEIS mock exam papers uh, helped your students? Okay, because I feel that there's lack of material in the market for AEIS questions. So these materials help my students to familiar, uh, familiarize with the uh, AEIS for format. Yes, that is very, very true. And also because we want to, uh, you know, get as close to the exam setting as possible. So what specifically do you like about the AEIS mock exam papers in your lessons? Oh, okay. So um, I like because there is uh, actually um, the time practice for the students so we can assess the student but performance and there are also step-by-step -step answers behind so when a student don't un understand about a, a question I can show her that how to deal with the question step-by-step. Um, -step. Yes that is very very true and exactly what Candy is saying you know I think the AEIS mock exam papers does give a lot of room for self-directed learning and evaluation. So yes, uh, we had a very very lovely afternoon, you know, speaking with all the teachers and all the students right here at Star Ridge Education. And of course, speaking about our AEIS mock exam papers, please get your copy right now.